Hello floodies and globe defenders. Here I am at Cape Byron. There's apparently no curvature to be found at Byron Bay, but of course floodies don't know how to look for it. We looked at Hastings Point from the top of Cape Byron and then we looked at it from the beach and we found that it was missing, it was beyond the curve. We also looked at some beach um, that was viewed from Cape Byron and then viewed from down below and we found that from below some was missing over the curve. The location for this video is on the beach a little bit around the corner from Byron Bay and it's in the bay still and very close to Byron and probably considered as a part of Byron but we're on the beach here at Border Street. I took um, some photos and videos from down on the sand near the water and there you can just see here in the bottom middle there is a kind of a mini lookout where you can stand on, you can put on a tripod, take some pictures, and I took advantage of that. Now the distance to Julian Rocks to this area is around 2.3 miles, 3.7 kilometers. And some I also took some shots up towards Brunswick Heads which is seven miles eleven kilometers and South Golden Beach as usual ten miles sixteen kilometers now we'll get to the first picture so this is Julian Rocks from down on the beach, two point a little bit miles away, and it's looking to be right on the horizon. Not far enough away yet to be beyond the curb, but there's no water past the rocks. Now on a flat earth there you should see some water. And I'm not gonna go at this point I'm not gonna go into the explanations from flat earthers as to why they think they should you should not see water we'll get into that a little bit later this is a view of the end of Cape Byron and you can still see the beach there still see the rocks in the water and a view of the lighthouse you can still see the beach and it's a wonderful picture it's a view out ride out to Hastings Point and you can see Hastings Point is still not visible. That's a wider shot. Now we have a video here and you can still see the beach close by. I'm a little bit missing at the front because of the height of the waves but that's normal. And uh, as we go along you'll see that more of the beach is disappearing. And, oh, wait a minute, what's that? I've never seen one of those before. Looks like a, an electric powered surfboard of some kind. Hmm, I'd like to get me one of those. But then I looked up the price. Hmm, I don't think so. It looks like fun anyway. Anyway, back to business. So, as we pan further to the right, the um, beach starts to disappear more and more under the water and that's and as we zoom in you see it doesn't change the amount that is hidden now this is very important for reasons that i will explain now there's a life save, surf life saving tent um on the beach fair way up the beach now you can tell the size of the swell uh, because the the swell is obscuring more of the tent but that's only a certain percentage. The swell goes up and down and there's still plenty of tent and beach hidden behind that water. 
now as we pan right we'll come to some locations that we've seen before like this one this is we saw that in part one there's a little bit more you can see now you can see that community center building and we'll just let this pan right here so as i was saying there's two things you notice as you pan right more and more becomes hidden um, but we're maintaining the same height so this is important because this um, so-called height perspective which was invented cannot explain everything so we're at the same height so we should be according to a height perspective we should be the same and there's Hastings point is no longer there so here's that still fr from the video which shows um, a little bit more still doesn't show the beach but there's a building near the beach there and we'll, we'll show what that looked like from the other location we could not see that building uh, but now we're we're, we're about one mile closer and we are a little bit higher on the sand i did not go right down to the beach uh, from this location um, i can't remember the exact reason why might have been the waves were too high and i didn't want to get mixed up with the waves and this is from the lookout on that beach where I pointed out you could stand on that so it's um, a little bit higher it gives you a different view you can get high enough now to, to see the beach from the beach there's this row of pine trees there you can see how high the horizon is in, re in relation to those pine trees so the, they're there over the curve quite a bit and we go up a little bit higher and this is a snapshot taken out of that a video from a little bit higher and you can see for that sorry you can see that there's not so much obscured which is exactly as predicted on the globe model of course so here's that life surf life-saving tent on the beach viewed from a higher perspective <laughs> I shouldn't use the word perspective in that context but um, viewed from a higher vantage point and uh, you can see that it, you cannot see there how far up the beach is because you still can't see the front of the beach now from the higher vantage point the, you, this is Julian rocks and in this case you can see the horizon behind the rocks there's water behind the rocks because we've come up a little bit in height now I talked a little bit more about zoom and the fact that you can zoom in changes perspective there is there are some of the flatties will say that there's horizontal perspective as well as height perspective well let's just say there was such a thing there isn't but height perspective and and um, you zoom in you cannot see the bottom of something now the bottom you the the amount of bottom you cannot see does not change according to the level of zoom so if it was a function of perspective that the bottom of things changed then uh, it would change as you zoom in because zoom changes your perspective it alters the angular resolution of the image so there's no explanation for why when we pan along the beach that we see less and less of the beach there's no flat earth explanation there's a perfectly reasonable globe earth explanation 
So there's the uh, Julian Rocks from on the beach and a little bit higher. Now, from it's about three meters difference in height, roughly. I couldn't measure it, so I don't know exactly. So the difference in, just in case some of the flatties are talking about differences in elevation angles, the difference in elevation in three meters over what is 3.7 kilometers almost is 0 0.04 degrees. So flatties, good luck with explaining why that small angle makes such a big difference. And here's something I've found out of a video that my this is one of my favorites from Phuket Word. I've turned the sound off so we can watch this without the mumbo jumbo that goes with it. So it's a sand it's sand in front of the ocean. Now generally the sand is slanting down towards the ocean and it may very well be at this location. I don't know where the exact spot of this is. But you notice that as you go up and down in height it changes the visibility of what's beyond. It uncannily like you were looking over the curve of the ocean. I mean Where's your height perspective in this particular scenario? It's really simple if there's an obstruction. You can look over it. And this is exactly what a curve in the ocean looks like. There is no reason to have fancy concepts that are made up that, um, you know, to explain away something that you might think is impossible. A flatty will look at a sandbank and not even worry about the fact that it might be curved or sloping. But as soon as that's water, something happens in the brain. Eh, oh no, kid does not compute. Ah, bendy water. Ah. So um, they have to come up with something like high perspective to make that make sense to their brains again, even though that's something they've come up with is a complete fabrication and not based on science. Well, we're still left with the questions about will Hastings Point rise from the ocean? And will Julian rocks sink into the sea? Well, we will find out the answers to these questions in the next exciting installment on Finding Curvature in Byron Bay. And thank you very much for watching and thanks to all my subscribers. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you hopefully not too far in the future with part three.